Hi, I'm Victoria, and this is my podcast for Yukon English about culture. So this is Woody. Woody, introduce yourself. Hello, I am Woody, a um, soon-to-be 19-year-old who is an Asian living in America. <laughs> okay, thank you, Woody. Okay, so today we're just going to be discussing about, like, the struggles we face being Asian in America, stereotypes, racism, and, like, feeling like you don't belong here because of you are. So, <laughs> my first question is, did you ever struggle trying to adapt to two cultures, like the American culture and your own culture, like Asian culture? Um, I could say... Yeah, there was definitely a time when I was younger where, like, fitting in was kind of, like, a weird thing because you don't know whether you should follow your parents and embrace your culture, and you don't know if you should just be like your friends and cast your culture aside. So I definitely did experience, like, a double life in a way because in one part of my life, it's like, wow, culture, cultural foods, all this and that. And on another side, it was like, I want to fit in. I don't want to bring my culture to school or embrace it because I don't want people to think of me differently. I just wanted to blend in. Yeah, I definitely get that because there was this article I read about like living a double life. And like, there's so there's two different expectations, I feel like, like going to school and like being at home. Because at home, I feel like you have to especially in the asian culture you have to like stick to that culture and then when you go to school you have to like just switch completely who you are mm-hmm. which i feel like was pretty difficult um so like what was like what are the cultural differences that caused the most difficulty in your life you feel like um definitely Um, the, I, I would say the way, like, el- not elders, but, like, adult figures are treated, right? Because in most Asian cultures, adult figures are treated, like, with the utmost care. And then you see all these people at school who feel as if they're equal or greater than these adult figures who are trying to you know, put an authority figure in their life Mm -hmm. or is the authority figure. So definitely seeing, like, a whole, like, some people just treat their the adult figures in their life differently and sometimes without respect. But it's definitely, like, really shocking. It's like, you know, I grew up with, like, you should respect anyone who's older than you regardless of how old they are. Yeah, exactly. Because Asian, in the Asian culture, the older you are, the more hierarchy you have, I feel Mm -hmm. like. Definitely. So you live in California, right? And there's like yes. a lot of culture there. Well, I live in the East Coast when there's, well, where I'm from, there isn't much culture at all. So like, if we were to like switch places based off, where, off of where we live, do you think there would be like a drastic difference? Definitely. Uh, in California, there's definitely a higher population of different cultures and different identities. Um, you could look at like the like you could look at the map and the geography and the layout and see like there's probably some census information that shows where most races stay at right um i remember seeing something about how asians are more um what's the word they're more gravitated towards bigger cities mm-hmm. because um, in the mind of an outsider who's coming to America, it, you're thinking, oh, America is the land of the dreams. Big city equals a chance to make your dreams come true. So I feel like that's why a lot of cultures outside of America gravitate towards big cities. So if you definitely are living near a big city, you're going to see a higher population of different cultures. Mm-hmm. So if I were to move or switch places to a, a state or a city with a smaller population, 
I feel like the culture wouldn't be as diverse because, you know, there's less people and there's less likely that there's going to be more minorities if there's less people. Yeah, definitely. Because, like, I feel like where I live in Connecticut, there's a lot of Caucasians and there isn't very much culture for me to, like, explore. So, like, and where you live, there's just so much, I feel like. And, yeah. Anyways, what are, like, some of the struggles you face being Asian in, in America? And especially, okay. during, especially during COVID, because COVID was a big thing we both went through. Um, definitely during the peak of COVID, I avoided um, leaving the house because of of all like the violence on media and stuff is like it was definitely a turn off to leave the house because i was scared you know someone would look at me and be like oh this this is your fault you started this whole covid coronavirus thing um but definitely growing up there was like a lot put on me from like my peers and like even sometimes teachers because i feel like definitely in the past we are so used to basing people on stereotype. We've definitely grown out of that as a society Mm -hmm. slowly. Um, But it was like, oh, you're Asian. You should be good at math. You're Asian. You should, you're not good at driving. You're blind. Yeah. And especially with like, when, especially in elementary, there was that whole thing where they they were like, um, Chinese, uh, Chinese, Japanese, my knees, look at these. Right. It was like there was so much racism that we were so blind to as children that when you look back at it now, it was like, how was this okay? And like, and teachers didn't even say anything either. I feel like, mm-hmm. like no adult really like brought any awareness to it at all. Yeah, like so, like definitely racism was very, um, it was very normalized when we were younger, mm-hmm. and then we went through the whole. Like, you know, new president, he's different because he's a black president, meaning, you know, minorities are shining more. So there was like a point in time where there was not as much racism. It was still there, um, just not as big of a deal as it is now, because we're not looking at racism with a blind eye. We're looking at it face on. So there's like a lot of um, movements like Black Lives Matter and save Asian lives, and, like, there's so much going towards minorities um, that it's, like, the world is changing. So definitely, like, since we were so blind as children to the racism we were facing, looking at it now, it's like we, we really need to teach this next generation what's okay and what's not, that we shouldn't be stereotyping people based on where they come from. Especially now, um, not only did COVID put a huge target on Asians, there's also, an I feel like there was, in my opinion, an increase in also Asian fetishization with um, (laughs) popular media like Parasite, the Korean film that won an award, and with Squid Game especially. And the um, the increase of fans in the K-pop area too. Mm-hmm. So it's like, are are you like, should I be scared because people might hate me because I am Asian for COVID, or should I be worried that people will fetishize me because I could look like someone from Asian media that they like? Yeah, definitely. So I remember in the beginning of the pandemic, I was so scared to, like, go out or, like, do anything or, like, talk to anyone because I was just so scared that I was going to get hit on and get, like, criticized for that. And, like, I felt like I didn't belong at all, especially online because we had, like, a lot of online, like, I don't know what the word is. We were very exposed to the online world, I guess. Mm-hmm. And we faced a lot of discrimination on that. And stereotypes were very much a big thing for me growing up because I grew up in such a Caucasian area and they, like, were so foreign to, like, an Asian being, like, 
in their community. And I got hated on so much for it because of it. I still get hated on sometimes for it. And like, I don't know. It's just, I feel like, yeah, Asian, like racism towards Asians is very like normalized, which it really shouldn't at all. And mm-hmm. people need to bring more awareness to it. Especially since um, people describe Asians as the model minority, but that's because um, most of the time we are scared of what could happen and we're just so used to it, Um, especially with like so much in history. Most people, when they think of history, they think of, you know, um, a lot of very, I would say whitewashed things like, oh, Columbus discovered America or how, you know, the settlers in America from England did good, but there was so much negativity that is, you know, hidden away that's not in textbooks, like how um, there was the Chinese Exclusion Act, there was, you know, all that slavery, and it's like most of this stuff is condensed and not even solved, right? Because there's still, you know, a lot of racism and stigmas that stemmed from our past that is still going strong oh yeah the stereotypes of asians becoming doctors and lawyers is a very huge thing um personally i do not fit into that stereotype i have broken Mm -hmm. the stereotype (laughs) um most of my family though have lived up to that expectation but i really haven't and i i feel like i have so much pressure on me from my family and my peer, my peers, mostly my family, because they want me to have the best life I can, be as smart as I can, live the best life, have money, so they can live the life that I wasn't, they weren't able to have. And I got left a lot of pressure from my peers because stereotypes is always about stereotypes. And they were always like, they would always come to me for like homework answers or like be like, hey, you're smart, you're Asian, like, can you do this for me? I'm like, um that's just not how it works no i definitely understand like the whole like stereotype but coming from an asian family where like we weren't really like my i would say um of most asian families mine is definitely on the more um flexible side right Mm -hmm. um my father doesn't mind like as long as we're happy doing what we are doing my mom on the other side i feel like she does have a she does have her own opinion she wants us to not only work hard and do our best she wants us to live the best life and i feel like she she does push that stigma of wanting us to work as a higher paying job like doctors and lawyers and other jobs that follow pursuit yeah, I feel like my mom was very my mom. Most of my mom's side was very flexible with me, but my dad's side is super traditional. And like all my cousins were like valedictorians of their grade, or some of them are valedictorians of the grade, and they're all music prodigies or they have some some kind of talent. And I'm not them, so like I have to be compared to them almost every single day by my dad's side, mm-hmm. which takes a which is a lot on a kid for being a teenager. And trying to find who you are, like, I was put with, like, a lot of pressure trying to be and, like, live up to them. When I really shouldn't, like, I should have just, like, been who I was and, like, found my own passion. But no, I, like, tried to chase trying to be who I really wasn't, Mm -hmm. which was a big thing, I feel like. Yeah, um, I can also definitely relate. I just feel like... I stick out like a sore thumb because I'm I'm not great at art. I'm not great at music. I'm not really good at anything. I'm I feel like I'm very much mediocre when it comes to things yeah, I do. Like I'm just average, which really isn't what you want to be in the Asian culture. <laughs> I feel because yeah. like. um, the stereotype is be better than everyone else. Don't be average. Like yeah, you literally if you get like. An A minus that's a fail automatically or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, especially with the whole um, doctor lawyer thing, they want us to pursue higher education. And personally, for me, I don't know if I can. 
um, seek higher education right now because I feel like with everything that happened, my mental health isn't ready. So I feel like because I'm not seeking higher education right after high school, it, it makes me feel like, wow, these people are going to be disappointed at me because I'm Asian and I don't want to go to school right away. Yeah, mental health is very unacknowledged yes. in the Asian culture. It's like taboo yeah. almost. Like mm-hmm. you can't have a mental illness at all, or you're just like completely crazy and they'll like send you away to some school or something. Like that's the reason why I don't fit so much in a stereotype, just because of mental health reasons. And like I, my mental health was not able, like I didn't have like the, I don't know what the word is. It's just like the mental health took me over and so I can't be who my family wants me to be and expects me to be. Because in my family at least, like I'm not like not allowed to show any emotion like at all. Mm-hmm. Or like it's if you show any sign of like sadness, it's shown as weak and you can't be weak at all. You have to be strong. Definitely. Especially because um, you you're you're the youngest of your family, so you definitely have older siblings where you have to look up to because your parents set that expectation. They want you to be like your older siblings. For me, since I'm the oldest, I'm supposed to set the better example, but because of the stress of having so much siblings and you know being put on a this high pedestal, it's mm-hmm. kind of crazy because it's like, wow, I look... Like, I'm falling apart and my life's a train wreck. But mm-hmm. I have to try my best to put on this facade, which tears away at my mental health because it's like... Definitely. It's very draining. Yeah, it's like, why... I didn't choose to be the oldest sibling. I just happened to be. Um, and plus, why should I be the example, right? I know I should set a good example, but why mm-hmm. should I be the prime example, right? Yeah. As long as I'm a good example then that should be fine because everyone should set out on their own path to do what they, what should make them happy instead of following in the st- footsteps of other family. Yeah, it's just like our culture. Like, if you're the oldest and you're a male, you are the hierarchy, especially in my family, though. Like, my brother is praised. He's always being praised, and I, like, always get compared to him, which tears away at your mental health a lot. Because you want to be your own independent person, but it's hard to when you have this expectation you have to live up to. Mm-hmm. And it's just hard. It's just, it tears, you, you like, I feel like, if, for me personally, like, I lose myself piece by piece almost every time. I'm like, I can't yeah. find who I am. Especially when um, you see the oldest sibling being praised or, you know, getting things Um, for just even being the oldest, right? Mm -hmm. And the Asian culture is a very heteronormative society too because if you're not straight, if you're not a straight Asian male who's the oldest in your family, you're kind of looked down upon. So not only is it a struggle not fitting into that like older Asian brother role, I'm also not... Um, straight so it's like wow like not only am I looking like a disappointment for you know not falling into that stereotype of being the perfect older Asian brother who goes to law school um, Mm -hmm. I'm also like I look like a failure because I am not attracted to girls right it's like Mm -hmm. you know they want most Asian parents they want you to continue their legacy be through the heteronorm like heterosexual relationships because they want grandchildren mm-hmm. but since, like- you know mm-hmm. it's like do they have to be blood related <laughs> right really? something that's also frowned upon is like beauty standards beauty standards oh, also definitely. Right away your mental health because there's just like this expectation in the asian culture to be super skinny pale and like look a certain way but in the american culture it's like you have to have like curves or something beautiful eyes colored eyes and like blonde hair to fit in 
and it's just yeah. like which one do i choose like do i choose like my culture who i came from or like where i grew up to be and like do i want to fit in with the people but like not fit in with who i'm supposed to be it's it's a it's a struggle yeah um definitely i don't fit in well i definitely fit into a beauty standard just not mm -hmm. the one for me um i am a very feminine looking person so i do fall under the more feminine beauty standard and so i definitely don't look masculine so i don't fall into the you know tall asian boy with short hair mm -hmm. kind of you know yeah like, aesthetic and because asian beauty standards did does have very eurocentric roots that's where like the pale skin and stuff comes from which it came from european imperialism into asian cultures and it's like because these europeans look to be of high power that's where the beauty standard stems from because it's like oh if you look more european then you look you know more wealthy and you look like you have more power yeah. in reality why why should we have a beauty standard um i can definitely like see that the beauty standards are slowly changing you can definitely see it in like um the fashion industry or in you know the music industry where there's you know k-pop idols who are more tan or k-pop idols who are um you know more they weigh differently from the other members because with media we are subconsciously taught that we should look skinny and we should always you know look perfect in reality it's like nobody's perfect and um you know as long as you're confident then that's what really makes you attractive mm -hmm. i feel like i don't fit in fit into the asian standard or the american standard like there is this like other complete opposite of the asian stereotype of beauty standards of um an abg so there's like a complete opposite of two asian beauty standards of like an abg or an abb an abb is like stereotypical asian tall male that's fit and like but also has like American features. They're almost known as whitewashed. And I feel like I fit into the whitewashed stereotype sometimes. Mm -hmm. Cause I spend most of my time at school and like talking to my friends and they influenced me a lot, which is who I am today basically. But like my family, they were always working. So like I was never able to spend time with any of them or really get to know what my culture really is so yeah yeah um especially with the introduction of a lot of asian like based goods in america right if a person looks at you they'll be like oh you're asian but you don't like sushi or like they think it's weird if we're asian and we don't like some sort of asian product in america so it's like, you know, not all Asians like everything Asian, right? Mm -hmm. we, we're regular people. There's things that we don't like. Just because it comes from Asia doesn't mean we have to like it, right? It's okay for us to not like boba. It's okay for us not to like K-pop or anime or, you know, sushi or, like, there's so much. Um, like, uh, definitely there's new stereotypes being brought into our society, with this kind of stuff it but um going back to the abb and abg um it's definitely it's it's i would say i wouldn't say it's like a completely whitewash i'd say it's the western version of an asian beauty standard oh, yeah. right because asian like beauty standard it's like oh you look soft you look pure or like you look more natural and then in american beauty standards it's like oh you have you wear all this makeup, right? And like you have to contour this kind of way or you have to dress this kind of way. Or have your and, hair be a certain color. Yeah. With like 
Asian beauty stands in America, there's not only like the Asian baby girl, Asian baby boy style, there's also like the hype beast where it's like, oh, you, you look like you have to go to raves and drink boba and have a really decked out car. Mm-hmm. Or like you're spending daddy's credit card if you're, you know, a girl. It's like there's so many stereotypes on an Asian and it's not even just on how they look. If they, well, it is yeah, how they look, right? If you look like you're mean, people will assume that you're supposed to look like um, like an ABG. But if you look like you're pure or soft, they, they assume that you have to look another way. It's like there's so much that goes into the stereotypes for Asian and Asian culture that it's, you know, kind of annoying. It's, it's to do. It takes, it's a yeah. lot. It's a lot on the person, especially when you're growing up and you're like not even a teenager yet. You grow up with all these like expectations you have to reach, but you're still just a little kid. They, they mm-hmm. expect you to have like, be like super smart and know everything but you're still learning like you're still growing up and i feel like we i feel like i grew up so fast because of it but i'm i feel like i am very mature for my age and i don't look how i like how old i am i'm just like i grew up so fast because i had to take care of myself basically when i was super young and learn to do things on my own because like my parents didn't really speak English that well and they don't know that much and like my mom never finished high school because she was like moving to America so she didn't know much either so I had to learn most of all this stuff on my own and it's a lot on the both kids. It's a lot. Definitely. Um, I would say I'm on the more lucky end where my parents, they do understand English um, there is sometimes where I have to explain it, but I I'm definitely on the more lucky side when it comes to you know being Asian, um, because my parents understand English, um, and they were able to get their citizenships when I was younger, so I didn't really have to struggle as much or act as much of a translator as other people do mm-hmm. um in my life right i had a lot of friends where their parents needed their kids to always translate yeah um we're also lucky to have a more open society where there are translators in the schools you know sometimes um schools will put out a newsletter and have multiple languages right yeah um, because they do have access to someone who works there who happens to also speak that language. So um, depending on your area, it it can feel more inclusive, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, a lot of, I know there's a lot of Asians who struggle um, having to work on their selves, but they also have to assist their family. So there's a lot of, Asian kids who grow up really fast and who know all these adult things because they they had to act as the translator or even at that point they act like the head of a household because they are the only one that can understand what is going on most of the time. Yeah, like the American way I feel like is you gotta put yourself before others but as I grew up I had to push myself aside and forget all about myself and put my family first just so I could take care of them and everything. So thank right, you for the podcast. Uh, thank you, Woodsy, so much for letting me interview you and having this discussion. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>